Hey everybody, welcome to the channel, glad to have you here. Today we have another tournament um, battle for you all. It's um, This one is with the crazy mofo um, as the Empire going up against Indie Prize Wood Elves. Um, and so these are a very good set of games and we'll be going through all of them here today. Um, you can see the Empire has a main line of swordsmen. I really like this pick against the Wood Elves just because they do have shields um, and they will put up a decent fight with Eternal Guard. So they're um, just kind of a nice utility unit to allow um, your other stuff to really do the damage. Um, he does have a Hammer of Witches here who is opening fire. We'll sw quickly switch to that Forest Dragon. Um, he does have some Huntsmen here who are vetted up. and These guys are good because they do have anti-large so they're decent against tree men with um, four bonus versus large. Um, and they are stocked so they're pretty useful at shooting the wood elf archers. Um, he does have a general of the empire here on a horse. He does have armor piercing damage with that big ol' hammer. Um, he does have a bright wizard over here with flaming sword of ruin, cascading fire cloak, and fireball. Some sigmarite disciples, plug a gap here. Um, and he does have some witch hunter retinue who are pretty terrifying. They do flaming and magical attacks and they do have an anti-large bonus as well. They also have a net ability. Um, over here, the Tattersouls, um, and in the back you can see three units of Knights of the Blazing Sun and two Spearmen. Are these guys facing backwards? <laughs> They're facing backwards. Um, Sigmar's sons hold up this flank, um, and there's a Templehof Luminarch over here. Um, up in the air you can see some Wild Riders going around the flank. Um, up in the air there's a Forest Dragon. Um, main line here of Dryads and War Dancers. I love this pick. This is a great combination because um, the War Dancers are a very expensive unit here, but they are crazy good. They have 52 melee attack, 45 melee defense, um, an anti-infantry bonus, and a ton of weapon strength. Um, so they are just really, really good. They do have a, oh, I guess weakness to fire is this Kindle Flame. <laughs> so they will be very good at cutting through this kind of cheap fodder that um, Mofo has brought. He does have two units of Eternal Guard with shields, um, one unit of War Dancers with Azrae Spears here in the back, um, and a Lore of Life Spellsinger. Um, over here he does have a Glade Lady, I believe. Yeah, with the net of Amontok on a Forest Dragon, so two Forest Dragons in the air, um, and War Dancers with Dryad kind of meat shields as a core. And these Dryads are very cheap, only about 400 gold, um, but they do have some physical resistance, um, and they're pretty terrifying. But when there's a Flame Wizard on the field, they can be kind of isolated. Um, uh, just like a lot of um, wood elf units, like the forest dragon I believe has a weakness to fire um, and so do the dryads so, um, oh and he does have another unit of wild rider with shields over here this is the um, anti large variant over here is the um, anti infantry variant so um, the, the wild riders without shields are great against infantry the ones with shields are great against cab so just another way to differentiate those two. And you can see the Hammer of Witches is opening fire at that Forest Dragon, doing a decent amount of damage, but not really being able to hit most of its shots, only connecting now and then. Um, and you can see as these War Dancers pull up unmolested, um, and you can see his ranged contingent really just focusing here on the left, potentially making it easier to protect. And you can see He's really trying to get that Glade Lady, but luckily Indy Pride is good on the micro and pulls back. I really would have loved to see these guys target these War Dancers because they are a big threat to the Empire. Um, so you can see here the, the Swordsmen are going to charge in. Hammer of Witches definitely miss microed here, <laughs> letting it be pulled up. You always want to set your stuff on guard mode, but luckily he does notice and pull it back. Um, and these Swordsmen are going to get in here against these Dryads see the war dancers coming around the side as well um, and you can see especially with these two stacked up on each other these swordsmen are going to have no chance to win this fight um, so unless they are supported right by a lot of this cab and range units and like this you can see the sigmar's disciples coming in the side forest dragon coming up front trying to take out this flame the sorcerer of fire um, but there's a lot of um, huntsman fire coming in as well and the general of the empire is headed its way you can see the Wild Rider pushing way around the flank. Luminarch arcing up a shot. Oh, he's so lucky that that missed. Actually hit his own troops. Um, these Wild Riders here are going to get a nice charge on these Knights of the Blazing Sun, but I think they'll lose this fight in the end. We'll have to check back. 
So you can see there, Glade Lady taking some damage. Um, Forest Dragon coming in finally. Um, you can see a net is going to go down as he's shot with the Hammer of the Witches, and the Templehof Luminarch is going to open fire as well. So putting some decent damage on here. Luckily, that Potion of Toughness has kicked in, and it will start um, healing this guy. You can see the Swordsman cascading Fire Coke just a little bit too late, and I don't know what happened here, but they seem to be fleeing, running towards this main engagement. Um, that's just going to allow these guys a lot of free hits on them. Spearman doing a nice job just stacking up on this guy, but the Spearman has let the Hammer of Witches get isolated and wiped out. You can see the General of the Empire here. Good use of him, um, but these War Dancers as I feels will end him if he's not careful, so you definitely want to get him out. You can see the Knights of the Blazing Sun doing some nice rear charges over here. Templehof Luminarch sadly getting isolated by these Wild Riders and the Forest Dragon. Um, but you can see this firing squad over here has, is untouched and they do have anti-large and magical and flaming attacks over here so um, lots of good potential damage these wild riders though are going to get in here and just start putting an end to these guys the, the witch hunter retinue are no pushovers in melee but they don't really won't really stand up to um, wild riders you can see the general of the empire coming in for a rear charge and the knights in the back um, chasing off some routing units these spears here good use of these guys bringing them in against this forest dragon and you can see these Knights of the Blazing Sun doing a nice job cycle charging. And the Sigmar Suns are, of course, never going to break. Um, up through the middle here, there you can see these War Dancers are not too hurt. This one is. Um, this one's still in pretty good health. Um, and the Dragons, you can see they're both in decent health as well. Um, Spearmen coming around. Knights of the Blazing Sun cycle charging these guys. They do have... Oh, I did not mean to do that. They do have... Um, Oh, I don't think they have charge defense against all, so they will take a decent amount of damage there. Um, but if left in combat, these Knights of the Blazing Sun will go down. Just because the War Dancers have such incredible stats, and they do armor sunder, so they'll get even more of their damage through. Um, over here, you can see Flaming Sword of Ruin being dropped, giving these guys fire damage, hoping to swing this side of the fight in their favor. Um, Temple Hoff Luminarch definitely want to finish this thing off. You can see it needs to be turned around and starting to fire at these forest dragons um, but you can see with so many range units here it's hard for the forest dragon to just sit down and target one you can see, you can see actually these guys are shooting at the wild riders which probably is a good move um, for the late game and you can see this temple off and are still not turned around so definitely some a lot of micro going on you can see these war dancers have pushed through and are chasing some routing units I'm over here the um, Glade Lady is surrounded by these Knights of the Blazing Sun with their flaming damage are going to be doing a ton of damage to her, preventing her from taking off, and potentially here even getting rid of the Spellsinger of Life. You can see some of the infantry is riding here, the Eternal Guard, um, but the War Dancers is doing pretty well, cutting through a lot of this chaff, but they're just going to have a struggle against the Sigmaride Disciples who do have 65 armor, so a lot of their damage will be mitigated. Um, and you can see these Witch Hunter Retinue are opening fire here, doing a good chunk of damage. You can see this Temple Off Luminarch still not turned around. Gotta turn this guy around and open fire. Um, how much ammo does he have left? He's still got a number of shots left. Um, but you can see the one thing Indy does have going for him is these dragons. He still looks like he still has healing. Regrowth being dropped on the Glady, and you can see this Forest Dragon is coming over here. Oh, he's decided he's set his sight on this Luminarch. Oh man, you can see the Knights of the Blazing Sun though. While this is happening, our getting rid of the war dancers which are a huge part of the killing force of Indy Pride. And you can see here this Temple Hoffman Monarch is going to get dragon breathed, knocked out. But this Witch Hunter Renu is still opening fire, still doing some good damage. Um, you can see a lot of the Wood Elf infantry has routed at this point. The cavalry can keep these guys on the ground, prevent them from psycho charging. So this is not the best situation. There's a lot of infantry left on the field. Um, and I don't believe there's going to be much healing left at this point um, with how many regrowths have been dropped. I mean, you can see the Witch Hunter Retinue still has full ammo. Um, and these Knights of the Blazing Sun have surrounded this guy. So now it's just a, it's just a slogging fight. And we'll just kind of fast forward here. As um, Oh, you can see Earth Blood being dropped, Flaming Sword of Ruin. Uh, but <laughs> there's just so much here. You can see some stuff is coming back. Um, some war dancers, cannon crew. Um, but with all this flaming damage, the forest dragons just have a hard time. 
I wonder, what is their percentage? 14. Uh, maybe, I guess, do dragons not have... That... Do they not have flame in this? I guess they are not... They're not weak to flame in this, like, um, say, dryads are. So if we hover over these guys... Yeah, see, 54. So I guess forest dragons are not actually vulnerable to fire here. Um, so it really only helped here against this these fights with the um, dryads. Um, but you can see here, nevertheless, um, they are going to be chasing after this forest dragon. You can see the huntsman doing some good damage. General of the Empire, it, potentially if he can get isolated, um, they can just tear her out. Um, but you can see this dragon's just going to struggle to find a place where it's going to be able to do its best. You can see all this range is just continuing to try and drag this lady down. Um, finally gets rid of that bright wizard, but as he does, his forest dragon is going to get broken and killed there. Um, definitely a good game for MoFo there. His anti-large units, um, like the Luminarch, and his Witch Hunter Retinue were just able to isolate those very expensive units in Indy's army and um, put them down. And you can see that 2,500 gold unit only got 46 kills, but whereas his um, War Dancers here got a ton, 200, 185, 160. So you can see these um, Knights of the Blazing Sun just doing good work, um, getting rid of some Wild Riders. Um, you can see these Wild Riders of Shields definitely lost that fight with only 30 kills. Um, they're just not very good against a heavily armored cab of the Empire. Um, but you can see, really, it wasn't these um, this front line that did it. It was the cab, and it was the um, anti-large units, with, like the Witch Hunter and the Luminarch. Um, but we'll go into the next game here. And you can see the crazy mofo is going up against Indy Bright again. You can see he has brought um, the same army. Witch Hunter Retinue, Hammer of Witches, Swordsman Frontline. Um, Indy Pride has changed it up a bit. You can see he's gotten rid of that extra Forest Dragon, and he does, but he did keep his Galady on the Forest Dragon. He does still have that um, Spell Stringer of Life, but now he does have two Deepwood Scouts. Um, he's got the same amount of War Dancers, but he now has two Wildwood Rangers, um, three Wildwood Rangers, and two Warrior, two War Dancers with Azrai Spears. Um, you can see the Glade Lady safe in the corner, um, away from kind of cannon and Luminarch fire. So you can see the Deepwood Scouts are pushing up. They're going to be opening fire. They probably don't want to fire on the Swordsman, but the Tattersouls or the other or the Huntsman would be a great choice. Um, but like I said, the Huntsman do have stock, so he can't see any of these units. Um, they will be kind of returning fire here which is a benefit of them, but you can see nice targeting there on the Tattersoul's very expensive unit, and these um, Deepwood Scouts will pay for themselves very quickly um, if they're able to take out a unit like the Tattersoul's. So you can see here, again, the Knights of the Blazing Sun coming out around the flanks um, as this main line pushes up, and these uh, Huntsmen continue to try and chase these Deepwood Scouts. You can see the Luminarch is opening fire or trying to, not sure what to do as these main line engage. But the important part is look at these war dancers. They got in here again untouched, and they're just going to start cutting through this line. Um, cutting through this cheap chaff. Um, you can see here dropping Flaming Sword of Ruin, trying to buff these guys, but look just how quickly they took out these swordsmen um, or have dealt a ton of damage. Over here, nice net from the Glady. These war dancers with Azrai spears and these wilder rangers. You do not want these guys fighting here. And you can see they're going to make short work of these knights of the blazing sun as he tries to sneak these guys past. You can see over on this side trying again, trying to get his killing stuff in position. But these war dancers are so fast they're able to actually catch these guys. So what I love to do when they are protecting archers like this is just go hit the front line and pull out before they, um, before they can move these guys in. And then even if they're mismicroed, you can bring them all the way around and get in there. Um, but you can see the Huntsmen are doing a decent amount of work. Um, but you can see these Knights of the Blazing Sun just continuously running from a ton of anti-large units. And that's what he brought here. And he probably changed in his build. He brought a ton of anti-large armor piercing to help deal with these Knights of the Blazing Sun, which did a lot of the killing for um, to Crazy Mofo in the last battle. So you can see here these Wilder Rangers are winning, of course. 
um, ward answers as well, cutting through, but you can see this spell Singer of Life um, is going to get caught out in the open, and with that fu consistent fire, she is going to go down, she's going to try and heal herself, fireball as well, it's going to miss, hit that tree sadly, um, and this um, spell Singer of Life is going to go down, uh, but that's not the worst thing in the world, the Force Dragon is almost full health, and he did have to sacrifice this unit of Knights of the Blazing Sun to come in here and kill this thing instead of sending it after these Deepwood Scouts. So definitely a difficult trade to know where to go there. And you can see these uh, Sigmar Sons are just going to get... They're not going to get slaughtered by these guys, but their armor here, which is a surprise to most people, um, they are fighting two um, armor-piercing units um, with the Azrai and the... Wilder Ranger. So, Sigmar Sons will go down relatively quickly. You can see here the Glade Lord trying to focus him out. I think he's going to get netted and shot. Hammer of Witches opening fire. Um, but you can see these War Dancers have gotten through. And oh man, they're just going to chew through these Huntsmen so quick, like it's nothing. Um, Cascading Fire Cloak trying to save them as the Knights of the Blazing Sun come in the back. Definitely would have loved to have seen these guys attempt to do this earlier on. Those war dancers need to be taken off the field, and the Empire Infantry is just not going to cut it. Um, and you can see here he's realized that, and he's bringing these guys in to try and save them. But they do have Eternal Guard as well, and you can see these guys are firing in. So um, they are going to take some losses in that fight. Um, but you can see this middle has just cracked. There's not much left for the anvil. Um, you can see the Temple of the Mark struggling to find an angle on this Glady. Um, and Potion of Toughness going down, so even more healing. Um, and then miss there from the Temple of Luminarch. Um, a good hit there, could have um, taken out a lot of health here. And you can see that the Force Strike Glady having none of this Hammer of Witches. You can see he has won this kind of fight, but troops are coming in from all sides. Um, Knights of the Blazing Sun have kind of done their job, but here come the War Dancers as our spears. So you definitely want to get them out of here. Um, and you can see a lot of the Huntsmen went down, but the War hun Witch Hunter Retinue are almost entirely full health. Um, they do have that net ability. Um, but you can see the Deepwood Scouts in the back, allowed to kind of just spend their ammo as they wish. You can see this side has kind of won, so potentially can come around. Lore of Fire is fleeing. Some War Dancers as my Spears are coming out here. Oh man, is, are they going to be able to get a shot off? Just look how fast those guys are. <laughs> oh man. Come on. Oh, so there, got a nice hit, but just didn't do enough damage there. And a nice job with the net here, pulling out with that Luminarch. Um, you can see these Sigmar Disciples trying to chase after these guys. Same with the General. But the Knights of the Blazing Sun are just struggling here against a lot of this anti-large. Um, you can see the Witch Hunter Renu is now in melee. And like I said, they'll do pretty well. Um, but they just don't kill very fast. They'll hold their own, but they won't like get rid of other things. Um, and now you can see the Glady coming after this guy. Netted so he can't flee. Then eaten alive. That is why the Glady is definitely the superior lord in this game here. That net is just so useful. And there you saw a, one of its rare uses is just making sure you kill something. If you have something that you need to murder um, before it gets away, um, the net is also useful for that. Um, you can see now just a lot of Wood Elf infantry left alive, and it's going to turn around and just swarm whatever's left. <laughs> you can see this Witch Hunter Renew in here. But... There you see why these tournament battles are so cool, is just how the two um, factions, uh, how the two players try and adapt their playstyle um, to what they needed to do. There you saw that he, he probably really suffered at the hands of those Knights of the Blazing Sun, but in this one, he cut those Wild Riders and just had those spears to defend his back line um, and caught them out and really took out, by taking out those Knights of the Blazing Sun, he took out a lot of the killing power of Mofo's army, and that shows in, at, when you look at how much infantry here is left um, for the Wood Elves. And so yeah, just kind of just a wrap up at this point, you can see Sigmar's Sons, and so Valiant defeat from Mofo there. Um, and so that is the second battle in the set, so this third battle will determine which one of these guys comes out on top. 
Um, you can see here, comparing the Knights of the Blazing Sun kills to the last game, they got far less, um, and I think that's really what made the difference here. Um, Dryad's doing really well, Wildwood Rangers racking up a ton of kills, and again, these War Dancers with just a ton of kills, and these War Dancers, the Azurai Spears, um, just making sure to shut those guys down. And you saw that the Luminarch and the um, Range Contingent was unable to kind of just take down those lar that dragon like it did in the previous one just because Indy Pride was much more conservative with the Lord um, in this battle and he had a lot more money in um, other stuff so here is the third battle to kind of determine who wins um, so you can see a couple changes here got rid of one of the Huntsmen, replaced them with a um, whoa man, Sterling's Revenge here um, probably just going, well, it's a little bit more expensive than a Huntsman, but packs a little bit more punch and is better in melee. Um, he switched over here to the Sunmaker, which I think is a pretty good choice against the Wood Elves, just because they don't have a lot of armor, and in the previous battles, Indy Pride has not brought any trees. Um, and, oh man, just shot in the back. <laughs> just, I don't even know what they were shooting at. Um... But that definitely sucks. I think that's all that was changed. Just um, trying the same thing, hoping to make these Knights of the Blazing Sun work this time. Um, and you can see the Sterling's Revenge is over here, and you can see these uh, Knights of the Blazing Sun. Vanguard are just deployed all the way out here just to scout everything, and they should be brought back in here pretty soon. You can see, I believe Indy Pride has brought the same army. Pretty confident now that he's got a, um, got a more infantry-based army and it worked last time so I feel like he's just gonna try it again which is a good move and here you can see look oh man moving your artillery early on is just a death sentence for artillery it's very hard for them to get a lot of kills when they're moving when an enemy army is approaching um, what I like to do if this happens is have my artillery just stay where it is and fire while I move up my line um, so you can see Dryad's taking a decent amount of damage there um, and I believe he will switch targets um, a lot of those missing sadly definitely want to get those get that firing on the war dancers and there you can see it's doing a good amount of damage hitting even those wilded rangers fireball coming in taking out some dryads um, and you can see the infantry is just trying to get in as unmolested as possible there you can see the lunark trying to take pot shots at the glade lord but the tree did block it so nice use of terrain there oh man you can see these knights of the blazing sun definitely needed and these guys are definitely needed in here as the swordsman and gauge and here come the war dancers and right if he can't deal with this some some other way um, with the knights of the blazing sun or something this is not going to go super well there you can see a second shot blocked by the glade lord or by the forest and you can see these guys sitting in the back potentially waiting for that um, dragon to come in here Oh man, you can see that the Sunmaker actually doing a decent amount of damage there. Um, but nice job of spotting kind of the hole in his line. He dropped a overcasted um, Earth Blood. You can see another third Luminarch shot missing. And you can see, oh man, these Sterling's Revenge getting some nice flank shots. But here come his kind of reserves, and they're going to come in here and stop this from happening. Um, Sigmar Suns, though, I believe should win in this fight. And um, here come the Knights of the Blazing Sun. These Wilder Rangers here did get through, bringing these um, Knights of the Blazing Sun in. It is nice to charge these guys, but they are anti-large armor-piercing calves, so these Knights of the Blazing Sun will not like extended melee contact with these guys. And you can see the Eternal Guard here as well, um, and you can see the War Dancers with the Dryads are just cutting through these Swordsmen with minimal losses, uh, but they should have they should struggle a little bit more with these Tattersouls. Um, and you can see. Okay, this Witch Hunter Retinue is trying to finish off the Glade Loyalty, but you can see just at the edge of the vision, or at the range here, so a lot of their shots are going to miss, whereas before they were firing from a position where they were much more close up. So here you can see Knights of the Blazing Sun coming in. Nice use of the net here, not letting them kind of get their full charge or get all their units to attack. Um, they're going to, these War Dancers are going to chew these Knights of the Blazing Sun apart. Definitely would have loved to have seen these guys come around here and strike the non our anti large areas. Um, but that was one of the benefits of this build from Indy Pride is that there's just so much anti large on the field. 
Um, you can see just slowly this front is losing. Dwellers below doing a ton of damage to these Knights of the Blazing Sun, but they're not out. They have a lot of models left, so still ready to do some cycle charging. Some spearmen here in the back, um, unused, and you can see these this Glade Lady. Nice job using her peripherally, making sure she doesn't um, get into the kind of the danger zone. And you can see the Temple of Luminarch winding up again, and I think it's going to get its first hit, doing a ton of damage there. Sigmar Sons did win, um, but it's they're going to get in here, uh, but not before these really fast Wood Elf units are able to get into these range guys and shut them down. So you can see here Sunmaker used all of its ammo, so very good job there, even though it wasn't able to keep firing right away. Still did a lot of damage to the um, Wood Elf line. General of the Empire here. Oh, you can see that Bright Wizard. He was being used to kind of plug this hole. Definitely a good use for him, but he's just low armored and these guys are the perfect counter to something like that. So they're going to come in here and just annoy this Luminarch. Stop it from firing. So definitely great use of these guys. Witch Hunter Retinue coming in here. You can see a regrowth being dropped to stop the Witch Hunter Retinue from doing any damage because they even have an anti-large bonus in melee. Um, very expensive unit though. And you can see these Sterling's Revenge helping out. Knights of the Blazing Sun fleeing from these War Dancers. And you can see they're like almost as fast as them. Um, but looks like they're going to come in for a nice rear charge here. And this is the way to deal with war dancers. Oh, okay, they're going to come in here, charge against these war dancers. I guess they get the. You can see the back members did get caught, so it probably dragged the whole unit. And you can see him consistently trying to pull out. Um, you can see the temple off sadly was taken away, but hit this flank that I thought he was going to lose has one, so he's going to be pushing in here. Um, Knights of the Blazing Sun coming in. Doing some nice damage here to these Dryads. Knights of the Blazing Sun. Oh man, yeah. Just running down these War Dancers. And they have an int they have 76 charge bonus. So they on the charge they're going to be doing a ton of damage. Um, but you can see this Glady not just like untouched. Um, and there's just a lot of Wood Elf infantry still on the field. You can see these War Dancers over here taking on these Witch Hunter Retinue two very elite units in combat. The Witch Hunter is just kind of more healthy. Oh man, there you can see a fireball coming through. Just trying to use his ammo before he routes again. You can see this Temple Hoffman Mark, very low health, would love to see him turn around. Um, but you can see, I think it's just going to be army losses at this point. As um, Took out the general with the War Dancers. And then we're just going to converge here on the Sigmar Sons. So this battle does mean that Indie Pride goes on to the next bracket. I have a ton of battles. Um, I got them all from one player's perspective. Um, so it's pretty cool. And um, you can see there that the last Sigmar Sun does go down. You can see here the Sunmaker with a 130 kills, definitely very cool. Um, nice to the Blazing Sun, racking up a decent amount of kills, um, but just again not enough to stop these War Dancers, um, and these War Dancers with Azurai Spears just coming through in the end. You can see Sukumar Sun's doing a lot, the Witch Hunter Retinue definitely helping, um, but really just those, that Temple off Luminarch that's a lot of money that wasn't able to take out what it needed to take out um, to kind of shift that battle in MoFo's favor. Um, just those trees blocking those shots was vicious. Anyways, thanks so much for watching, guys, and that's that.